how to pay off your mortgage fast, faster than normal. That's today's show. Let's dive into it, everyone. Welcome into the show. This is the place where we help you build financial intelligence and ultimately, we hope, financial freedom. I'm Clayton Morris. Now, I've done this strategy multiple times. I've paid off multiple mortgages using different strategies. Heck, in fact, I've even written a book with Natalie called How to Pay Off Your Mortgage in Five to Seven Years. You should check out that book. It's a quick read. And one of the things we teach you in that book is financial intelligence about your mortgage. We spent a lot of time really deep diving. What are the fees? What are all the hidden things that you're paying inside of your mortgage? And there is, I will say upfront here, no magic bullet for paying off your mortgage. So I wanna go through a couple of key areas where we can help you pay off your mortgage more quickly. But again, there is no magic bullet for paying off your mortgage. After all, you have a debt. You have a debt to someone, a bank, right? Or maybe it's a private lender. But the bottom line is you have to pay that debt back at some point. So there's no walking away from this unless daddy is going to give you a big pile of money, in which case, then why are you even watching us in the first place, right? But again, there's no magic bullet, but there are some key strategies I think that can really help you. And really one of the first key strategies is to build financial intelligence. Because remember, you are up against millions of dollars in advertising from banks. So when you see different advertisements or follow the green line to retirement during the Super Bowl ads, and you just, oh, I'm gonna go down and follow that green line down to the local bank and I'm gonna hand them all of my money and they're gonna manage my money for ridiculous fees. They're gonna make a boatload of money off of managing your money and you're just gonna set it and forget it. That is financial ignorance. So what we try to do here on the channel is bring you financial intelligence. And in that way, that does create a bit of a magic bullet because if you follow some of the strategies and tactics we'll talk about today, you can pay off your mortgage much more quickly in ways that the bank doesn't advertise to you and the bank doesn't promote to you. So let's talk about some of those things. Um, and I will say some of this may come across to you as common sense. You may say, that's common sense, Clayton. That's great. However, common sense is not common practice. So while you may hear these things and know some of these things, that doesn't mean you've actually done these things. People do a lot of talking. Okay, people do a lot of talking and a lot of jibber jabber, but they don't actually take action and do these things. So let's start with the most obvious common sense one. And a lot of people do this. In fact, my parents have done this and I wish that they would have had greater financial intelligence when they approached this strategy, which is the refinance strategy. Now, look, a lot of people talk about refinancing. So yeah, refinancing is a great way to you know, get into a better loan. You're going to lower your monthly payment. That sounds great. A lot of people will promote this strategy. Oftentimes, people don't realize how many fees they're paying as a result of going this route. So absolutely shop around at your local banks for the opportunity to refinance your loan. Um, maybe take your 30-year loan, go around to 15 banks. They're all hungry right now for business. And they're hungry for people that already have a qualified lender. I mean, look, you're living in the house. You're paying your bills on time. They're happy to take that mortgage over from you. Think about it, though. If you do this strategy, the refinance strategy, you have to make sure that you're not just getting a lower interest rate on the refinance, but you're also not going to be paying a boatload in fees for closing costs. So this is the great mistake people make with refinancing is that they will refinance their property and they think, great, I'm getting a lower interest rate. I'm going to roll the remaining years into this new loan but then they're paying a boatload of money for closing costs and they're paying additional points and other things that are hidden inside of this refinance. So again, financial intelligence, I really want you to understand the math involved in this before you do a refinance. However, if you can get into a better loan with a lower price and you're going to save a couple hundred dollars a month, maybe it's 200 or $300 a month in cash, it would be going out because of the interest rates to this bank and your closing costs are not out of whack, and it makes sense that absolutely taking that additional $200, $300 a month and firing that towards the principal balance of your mortgage will enable you to pay that mortgage off in dramatically earlier fashion than you would if you remain in that loan. So really shop around on the refinance, and please be careful on the closing costs with this refinance, and make sure that it makes sense if you're gonna stay there for a longer period of time. A key point to, to say in this is, if you're going to move within a year, don't do a refinance because chances are the amount of closing costs you're going to pay for that refinance, are, it's going to be a wash. 
And then you're going to move and you're going to have wasted all this money on this refinance. But if you plan on staying in that house for a long time, then that year kind of a, in a setback that you're getting because of the additional costs on the closing costs and the fees could be a great strategy for you to pay this thing off more quickly. Now, I will talk about HELOCs here at the end of today's episode because HELOCs have gotten a bad rap um, and things have changed dramatically in the home equity line of credit space. So I want you to be aware of those things. And again, I want you to have financial intelligence about this. Now, years ago, I used the HELOC strategy to pay off multiple mortgages and it worked fantastic. But things have changed. And you absolutely need to be protected in this because I don't want you to do something stupid. And I, I want to warn you against using the strategy. So we'll stick around to the end of the episode to talk more about the HELOC strategy because things have changed a lot with the new tax law. And I want you to be very, very cautious to not do something stupid as it relates to HELOCs. You'll notice too that a lot of banks are advertising HELOCs as a way of paying off your mortgage. So you should be very skeptical of this. If banks are now advertising to you to get a HELOC in order to pay off your primary mortgage, bells and whistles should be going off in your head about this. So again, we'll talk about it in a little bit later in the show. The next thing I want to talk about, though, is something that most people never think about. And it's one of my favorite strategies to pay off your mortgage early, and that is using your retirement account. I know, oh my gosh, sacred cow, we can't touch our retirement account, our 401k, holy smokes, we can't touch it. Why? It's your money sitting there probably not doing very well. Maybe you're getting a 3% return, maybe a 4% return. Then one day the stock market drops 700 points like it did last week and boom, it gets adjusted. Remember, a 401k was never meant to be a primary source of retirement funds. It was set up by the creator of the 401k as a secondary way of protection with a pension. They thought you'd have a pension and a 401k to help for retirement, but it has really gone bust. All of the fees that you're paying inside of your 401k, it's exorbitant. So if you do have a 401k with your company and you have some money in there, you can borrow, not withdraw, but borrow from your 401k to fire it at your primary mortgage. And this could be a dramatic way of reducing the amount of years you're paying on your, on your overall mortgage. Think about it. You've got $30,000 sitting in your 401k. You borrow from it, which you'll pay back, okay? But you're paying it back to yourself. It's the bank of you, okay? You're paying it back to yourself, but you're now taking that money that's sitting there, it's your money, and you're firing it at the principal balance of your mortgage, and you will shave years off of your mortgage. I mean, this is where you can shave a decade off of your mortgage by doing this strategy. So this is really one of my favorite methods for paying off your mortgage early. Now, again, if you're planning on quitting your job next week, this may not be the best strategy for you, right? Because you're going to have to pay back the 401k loan out of your um, out of your payroll. But the reason that this works so strongly is because you're trading time and your two biggest enemies in a mortgage are time and interest. So a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just make one extra payment? That's like doing this. No, it's not. Because now you're taking that $30,000 and you're firing it today. Remember, time is an enemy. You're firing it today at the principal balance of your loan. And you're completely altering that amortization schedule. You're going after the two big enemies here, which is time and interest. And if you can use that sword and go after both of those simultaneously by using your 401k in that way, holy smokes. I mean, things can change dramatically. So now you're still at your job, you're not leaving anytime soon, and out of your payroll, you're paying back your 401k. Now, typically with your 401k borrowing, you can do it however, you can pay it back how quickly you want, you know, one year, two years, it depends on your provider, but you can pay it back out of your payroll over time. Now, the beauty of this method is that every year you only get to put a certain amount into your 401k under federal guidelines, right? Under this strategy, by paying yourself back, you're actually able to exceed the amount that you're able to contribute to your 401k. Think about that for a second. So not only are you paying interest to yourself as the bank of you, you're also getting to exceed the amount you put in for the federal government cap on 401k and retirement contributions. So a killer strategy. Plus now you've reduced 
the the amount of years you'll have to pay on that 30 year mortgage dramatically. So you may even consider doing that method and then refinancing because now you're going to reset that calculator and you'll have a dramatically different amortization schedule if you do this first and then go through a refinancing process. So again, no magic bullet, but financial intelligence here. This can dramatically change how you do these things. The next step is a little bit more obvious, a little bit more common sense, but again, common sense is not common practice. What if you did bi-weekly payments for your mortgage instead of the 52 weeks a year or the 52, I'm sorry, the, the 12 months a year that you're paying your mortgage? Um, if you shifted that into the 52 weeks plan where you're now paying every other week, because certain months are shorter. We have February that's shorter, you have other months that are longer, right? That means you're gonna be making additional payments to your mortgage given that time. Now, here's what I would recommend, is to do this strategy, which I have done and paid off my mortgage much more quickly using this strategy of paying bi-weekly payments. But I would encourage you to do that in addition to making a big firing payment to your principal balance. Because again, when you're just sitting in a normal payment, you're paying interest for the first number of years. We had someone watching today's show who just got her 30-year mortgage, just closed like a week ago. So she's going to be paying interest for the first like five, seven years or so of that loan, depending on, uh, on the loan. So if you can make those biweekly payments, that's great. But I would also recommend then firing that additional cash that you have available in some, some place or fashion right towards the principal balance because those biweekly payments aren't really tacking the main issue here. That's how this strategy works is when you can fire those payments at the principal balance. And you have to be sure the banks will not. Say, I mean, we've had this happen where we'll send in a principal payment for our mortgage and they we you have to write in the memo line, you know, principal balance, principal payment only. Make sure that does not get sent to your, your, your interest part of it. You may even need to go into your bank and say, please only apply this to the principal balance because that's how you alter that amateurization schedule not by paying the interest portion of it. I hope that makes sense. But, And then you'll notice, I want you to check it too. So next month when you get your statement, if it shows that they just made a regular payment, you got to call them and yell at them and tell them, hey, look, I'm sorry, this needs to go towards the principal balance, not just towards the, you know, the interest payment on this as well. The next thing on my list is to sell stuff, okay? You've got to check out a video that I've done on I'm selling everything. I'm just selling everything. I'm putting everything up for sale. I'm uh, just cleaning out my closet, selling everything. Old cameras, old computers, old, you know, just random stuff in the house. I even have old uh, Batman figurines that I'm selling. Sell stuff. Look, I guarantee you right now you're watching. And please tell me, I'd love to hear if this is true. Are you living within your means right now? Or are there things that you just waste money on? Or are there things sitting around that are sort of defining you egotistically? And I don't mean that in any kind of negative way, but I mean, do you have a big bookshelf full of books that you've read and you're never going to read again, but you're surrounded by them because somehow that lifts you up somehow? Sell them. I went through a huge box of old CDs of mine, hundreds of them. Guess what? I'm selling them. I'm actually going to donate those. I'm giving those to a, a local veterans group and they can sell them. They can probably sell them for like four or $5 a piece. Because if you look on eBay, CDs, old CDs are selling for like four or five dollars a piece. I have hundreds of them. I'm giving them to a local veterans group. They can sell them and raise money. You have so much stuff. I guarantee you, you can sell some things. Put them up on the Facebook marketplace. Put it up on eBay. Hold a regular garage sale at your house and make a few hundred extra dollars per month. You know what they say, you know, was it oh, one man's trash is another man's treasure? It's absolutely true. The stuff that we've been selling in our house would blow your mind. I'm just clearing it all out. I'm like, God, why do I need this crap? And we've been putting it up on eBay. We've been you know, doing it on the Facebook marketplace. And it's been amazing. So people will show up. They're here, like, here's 10 bucks for that random thing in your house. Imagine doing that every month, okay? Or just once a year where you build up an extra few thousand dollars because of it. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you have a few thousand dollars sitting around your house right now that you could sell and use that and go right towards the principal balance of your mortgage. Tell the bank, I want to use this for principal, not interest. And you can potentially shave years off your amateurization calendar. Natalie and I love to do this. We love to pull up our spreadsheet 
and we'd like to make a big principal payment to the mortgage. We've done this on multiple mortgages that we paid off using the strategy and we've written about it in the book. And we'll watch on the spreadsheet, the Google spreadsheet, we'll watch it happen. And you just see this entire years fall away off your schedule when you do this. It can happen. You just have to be diligent about it. But I'm just saying, sell stuff, sell crap around your house that you don't need. We're, we're being weighed down by things. And really, what do you need? You need your family, right? Maybe you need your iPad to run your business. But what do you need? You need all this extra crap in your house. I bet there's clothes in your closet right now that still have still has tags on it that you forgot about. Go through it, clean it out. How many shirts do you really wear? Sell some things. And I bet you can pay off your mortgage much more quickly. And I'd love to hear from you. Tell me the things that you're going to sell. Please tell me in the comments. I cannot wait for you to tell me the stuff you'll sell. I want to talk about um, the home equity line of credit. You need to be very careful about the HELOC strategy when it comes to paying off your primary mortgage. It's incredibly complicated, okay? And it's become much more difficult now because of the changes in the tax law. I say that because now it's not a deduction anymore if you do it the old way. Now, the new way to do it and still get the deduction is incredibly complicated. And, and this is an advanced ninja strategy not for the faint of heart. And you need to be diligent about it because I don't want you to be over leveraged if you do it this way. A home equity line of credit can be fantastic. It can be fantastic for buying investment properties, which I've done and I love it as a strategy for that, right? It enables you to make a down payment, get into an investment vehicle, an investment of performing asset, okay? And using that performing asset to pay back the home equity line of credit, it's a great strategy. I would not recommend using a home equity line of credit to, 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 you know, to do things around your house or to buy a boat or other non-performing assets. The more money you're putting into the home you live in, I think it's a huge mistake because you're not living in a performing asset after all. You're living in a home that's taking money out of your pocket. So don't add to that by using a home equity line of credit. Now, I've seen advertisements recently, even from local banks that are advertising HELOCs as a way of paying down your mortgage. That scares me. When they're promoting this, the banks are now promoting it, okay? Because of the variable interest rate is so scary, so that can adjust. So a couple of things change with the tax law. Number one, it's not an interest deduction anymore, okay? You can't write this off, the mortgage interest deduction on your HELOC, unless, unless you have a very smart accountant like we do, like Tom Wheelwright and others, and who can help you understand that you could write and issue yourself a promissory note, and then you're paying back the promissory note doing it that way. Again, I know, right? Alarm bells. It can, all I want to say, it can be done. You just need to do it incredibly carefully and talk to your CPA if you're planning on doing this strategy. The idea of using a home equity line of credit is your change. It's a different financial product. Okay. It's not an amortized, it's not an amortized product. So when you're able to take that HELOC and fire it at your principal balance, even if you use like $5,000 from it, okay? I'm not saying use all 100,000 that you have or use all 50. I'm saying if you have a $50,000 home equity line of credit or $100,000, maybe use a small portion of that if you want to fire it at the principal balance of your main mortgage with a strategy to pay it back. Because again, we're dealing with this variable interest rate here, okay? So it's very important that you don't become over leveraged with this product. I would encourage you though, to think about how you could use it to buy a performing asset that where the rent payment from that tenant in that property is paying back that, that loan. Now, people will ask me all the time, well, can I do both? Of course, you just have to be smart about it. Again, financially intelligent. I don't want you to do something stupid here. So if you have a home equity line of credit, let's say you have $100,000 and you want to use a small portion of that as a down payment, maybe even for a financeable rental property. So maybe you take 10K out of that home equity line of credit. Remember the house you live in, you can't eat the equity. You're in this house, you can't eat the equity in that property, but you can leverage some of that equity to help you build wealth and a buy a performing asset. So you could use a portion of that as a down payment, you know, to on a financeable rental property or, you know, even finding a cheap rental property that maybe you have to do some fix up on, you know, 10, $20,000 um, that you have to buy and fix up. So there are ways to do it. I'm not going to be the final authority on this. That needs to be you talking with your team, your tax advisor on this. Hopefully you've got a, a, you know, a savvy one, a really smart one who understands the tax code really deeply. If you're working with a CPA who has not read the tax code recently, 
I'd hit the, you know, I'd hit the door, get out of there. Someone who eats, breathes and sleeps the tax code and understands the changes to what happened in 2017 with the Trump tax bill, what, what's different about it? So again, HELOC is a powerful vehicle. It's fantastic. You have to use it properly. And I would use it intelligently if you're going to use it this way. But again, I would almost use it to buy a performing asset instead of trying to pay down my primary mortgage using this strategy, unless you really know what you're doing and you're really in a system to make sure it's being paid back properly. Okay. That's my disclaimer on the HELOC strategy. Things have shifted over the years. Um, you know, back in the day, you get a, you know, a 1% interest rate on a HELOC for five years, you know, okay. Then that's a different ball game here because now we're, we're, we're trading one financial product for another, right? We're taking the 1% interest and we're slashing the principal balance of a 5% interest mortgage. It's the same thing like refinancing. We need to be smart to refinancing in order to make it work. Don't just think of refinance as smart, okay? You need to make sure you understand the math before you jump into this. So there you go, a number of different ways to pay off your mortgage quickly. I want you to check out this video as well on how I sell. I was selling everything in my house. You gotta check out that video and we will see you over there. And please subscribe. We'll see you next time, everyone.